So g'day everybody and welcome again to our Smoko Q&A session and today our topic is going to be joining you lambs and um, this is our, our third Q&A session and previously uh, George has done, uh, two weeks ago George did one on native grasses and their feed quality and Kate McCarthy last week did one on grazing and managing pastures uh, going into the cooler months and if anybody hasn't had a look at these uh, Q&A sessions I would strongly encourage you to, to go back and, and have a look and have a listen because they are uh, quite relevant to um, our topic today um, because of uh, the nutrition that they talk about, the nutritional value in, in those our native grasses and, and our tropical pastures and how to graze them and, and, and the requirements that uh, these ewes have going forward if we're going to join these, these ewe lambs. Um, and recently I did a, a video, just a short video in our seasonal update um, which was around um, joining ewes and their nutritional requirements just in general. But today I'd like to just shift the focus a little bit to um, joining ewe lambs because I think that's probably more relevant at this time. I think um, for most of us our adult ewes are probably joined and we're in that pregnancy uh, phase or, or process now. Um, but for the ewe lambs, uh, maybe some of us that are in the meat game have, have already joined some of our ewe lambs. But Certainly the merino job and, and uh, in the fine wool game we're probably still just trying to reach those targets where we can, we can join these, these uh, ewe lambs. So um, um, with those ewe lambs um, many of us are looking to join them because we want to lift our, our flock numbers after coming out of the drought um, and this is, this is quite an achievable way to do it. Um, and to do it a little bit quicker um, to make make the use of these these ewe lambs and it and they do have um, the potential um, within our flock to, to maximize the productivity and profitability of our of our breeding flock but to do this they they're really going to require some some special treatment and uh, over and above that of our though ad our adult flock and they're going to need appropriate nutrition and they're going to need to be well managed. And providing our growth rate targets are achieved and good joining practices are implemented, there can be financial benefits associated with joining ewe lambs. But on the flip side, there is some serious consequences if some of the boxes aren't ticked and we don't get these, our ducks lined up, so to speak, and, and uh, we could end up quite easily with, with these ewes being stunted in growth and we could have inferior lambs and, and a loss of wool income and the end result could also include lower conception rates and poor lambing percentages and, and high ewe mortality so um, it's just we really need to um, get all these boxes ticked we can't just tick a couple of these boxes and hopefully at the end we're going to have a successful outcome. We really need to, to line all our ducks up to, to get this to, to be a successful process for us. And um, So just before I go on and, and just mention and look at a few of these, these key factors into making this a successful process, I'd just like to mention if anybody has any questions uh, throughout this, this Q&A, um, feel free by all means to, to put them up and uh, I have Dale here with me, our team leader and, and uh, he'll let me know what they are and we'll do our best to, to answer these questions and, and help out where we can and um, so let's just have a look at some of these, these key factors and the first one really that we need to, to get these ewes joined is um, growth rate targets and our growth rate targets, uh, that's something that we need to achieve and there's a couple of ways that we can, we can assess our ewes 
um, to determine whether they're ready to be joined. And the first, wa first one is, and, and this probably suits more uh, the meat, meat uh, growers, those with the, the composite breeds and, and dorpers and the likes, that um, they need to be seven months of age, preferably, and at least 45 kilos at the time of joining. So that's, that's, that's one way that we can assess. But for those with the merinos, and particularly in, in, the, in the fine wool uh, game, with the merinos, um, the best way to assess them to determine if they're right to join is that they need to be 80% or preferably 90% of their adult weight. So we really need to um, be familiar with uh, the mothers of these ewes and, and to weigh them so we understand what the adult weight is so that we know going forward um, what these ewe lambs need, the weight that they need to be so that they can be ready ready to join. And So so the heavier and older the ewe lambs are at joining, the greater percentage that will cycle, join and lamb successfully. So it really is important to uh, hit these these growth rate targets when we when we're looking at joining uh, these these ewe lambs and and just a, a, a an equation that I'd like to um, throw in there and something to consider is the higher the joining weight, the better the conception rate, and therefore the higher the lamb birth weight, and the better the lamb survival rates. And this has been proven to translate to higher weaning weights for both merino and composites. So it really, a higher joining weight equals more dollars at the end of this process. The next thing to consider is, is the nutrition. Now these, these, um, these young ewe lambs are going to uh, require um, more nutrition, better nutrition than, than our adult use. Um, and really what we're looking for at the point of joining um, is a condition score of three. And it's, it's really important that, it, that this condition score be maintained um, throughout, throughout the pregnancy <coughs> because um, this, this young ewe is, is still um, growing, laying down bone, fat and muscle as well as trying to divert uh, nutrients to um, a growing fetus. So um, we really need to keep that nutrition up um, and maintain that right throughout uh, the pregnancy and that's that's really the key is um, to maintain that throughout throughout the pregnancy and so we look at um, some of the protein and energy requirements um, for these young ewes and I won't won't go into this in in a huge amount of depth because there are um, a fair amount of variables that can come into into these nutritional requirements as far as um, our feed quality, the type of feed, uh, the size of our ewes, the weight of our ewes, it, it, there is a fair few variables but I can just mention there that if anybody wants um, say a self-assessment of their own ewes um, and they want help with, with doing that, uh, both Kate McCarthy who's based in Narrabri and, and I'm based out of Warrialda and cover the northwest. Um, we're more than happy to for you to ring in or we're more than happy to come out and do farm visits and just um, help uh, walk through um, the, the requirements of these these young ewes and in regards to what feed you have on hand and is available in your paddocks and so on and look at um, just what uh, what might be required to, to meet the nutritional um, requirements of these <coughs> these young ewes and and the important thing to remember here is that the nutrition affects the live weight and the wool production of the progeny over its an entire life and, and it also affects the ewe's ability to survive and provide for the lamb. So they're just some um, key things that um, put a 
value on um, nutrition and just to give some clarity, just a little bit of clarity there of what is required for these young ewes, um, what we're looking for is um, feed quality of between 15 and 16 percent protein and then to have a feed value of uh, 11 and a half to 12 megajoules of energy. That's what these young ewes are going to require nutritionally to go forward and to grow that that lamb and the other thing to consider <coughs> around nutrition is um, wool production um, and we've heard it, well I know I have myself and probably many others have heard people say that oh they cut a lot of wool this year because they, they had plenty of feed, the, the sheep had plenty of feed and so they grew a lot of wool and that's to a certain extent that's very true um, the amount of wool that's produced does does come back to basically what we put down their, their throat um, but something to consider and remember is that and, and it's a key point for the potential wool growth of these these animals is that the development of the skin during the pregnancy period and these follicles, these wool follicles that um, develop the primary follicles develop in the growing fetus from around 60 days of day 60 of pregnancy and are complete by day 90. Now the secondary follicles and these are the follicles, the secondary ones which are the biggest contributor to length and weight cut develop from around day 90 and up to four weeks after birth and this development remains and sets the potential of the animal for its entire life. So this is, this is really um, very important um, for the potential wool cut of these, these young um, lambs that we're, we're wanting to produce from these ewes. And so that's something to um, remember when we're thinking about the nutritional value that we give to, to these young ewes. And the twin bearing ewes is another thing that um, they have a, a higher requirement and that can be um, between 15 to 20 percent higher than that of a single bearing ewe so um, it's a good idea and we strongly encourage people to scan uh, for multiples so that they can uh, separate them and, and, and look after them um, separately and, and give them the, the necessary requirements and the problem we can run into there if we run them all together and we, we're feeding these animals for um, the, the twin bearing ewes is that our single bearing ewes in that, that later stage of, stage of pregnancy can, can get above that condition score four and, and uh, then we can really start to run into problems with uh, lamb size and, and lambing. So um, it really is a good idea to, to scan and to separate uh, our multiple ewes um, so that we can um, look after them as they need it and, and the other thing and dare I say it is uh, to consider is that if the season deteriorates uh, supplementary feeding may be something that's required uh, to meet the requirements of particularly these twin bearing ewes they'll be the ones that'll, that'll really fall away quickly if, if the season does deteriorate and so hopefully that doesn't happen we, we don't really want to go back to where we've come from but it's just something to really keep in mind and so we can see that from this that nutrition during pregnancy is really important for the ewe and, and, the, and the developing lamb and, and a successful outcome. And so the, the next thing to, to consider is, is um, the joining ewe management and this really um, plays an important part in the success of um, our conception rates and, and, and the key points here to, to really take into consideration are that these young ewes that they cycle for a shorter period than the adult ewes and it can be only uh, from up to 6 to 12 hours that these young ewes will cycle um, against a, an adult ewe that can cycle for a day and a half and, and also these young ewes they will not seek out rams to the same extent as an adult ewe. So um, just to put some 
clarity around that also is, is that the ram, he may only have half a day um, at the best every 21 days to find a cycling ewe. So it's, it's an, and often uh, the first ovulation is often a silent ovulation so they won't join on that ovulation and so it's really something to consider when we, we're going to put the rams out with these ewes and, and some key management practice that can, that can combat this uh, and that we encourage people to do is to use teasers to initiate puberty and cycling 15 days prior to joining and the use of teasers will stimulate use to cycle and also to lead to a more compact lambing period which can be very helpful at the other end um, <coughs> with these these young ewes and, and uh, also another thing that can help is introducing a higher proportion of rams um, we would suggest a minimum of 2% and some producers I know <coughs> are using as many as 5% so it's important that we get we get coverage and, and the use of experienced rams is another another thing um, it can be a negative effect for these ewes going forward if um, we use rams that um, that are not experienced and they don't the ewes don't have a good experience in this first joining um, it can have uh, negative effects going forward and so it's just something to consider consider and if we are able to use experienced rams and the the other thing that we can do and it's it's um, it's probably not or well it has its for and against but it is an option is to extend the joining period to eight weeks and and as I said this does has its for and against but um, it is an option um, it just can make it a little bit harder when we come to that that weaning weaning process and also the other thing um, is ensure that the paddock is not too large that we, we're joining in to enable good contact between rams and ewes and so we need to um, really know our paddocks um, for the joining and and I'm going to cover that a little bit more too in, in the lambing um, it's really good to understand um, on our individual properties our, our paddocks and um, so and also research has been a lot of research done recently and in, in the last recent years and um, and it shows that joining in containment can lift conception rates by 15 to 20 percent compared to to joining in in the paddock and and this is just because of um, the coverage that we can get um, with these young ewes when they only cycle for you know six to twelve hours if if we've got them in that tight contained area um, it's just much easier for the rams to to find these young ewes and to get coverage when the, uh, when they're in containment and so <coughs> the next step is um, is lambing um, and there's a few things to really consider uh, lambing down these these young ewes and again <coughs> I go back to uh, the condition score at lambing um, condition score is an important thing that we really need to uh, monitor throughout the pregnancy um, because if we lose a condition score it takes um, all the research shows it takes about a month to put a single condition to lift a single condition score to put that back on the ewe so it is something that we need to keep an eye on and to make sure that they're they're not falling away and it's particularly critical for these for these young ewes where they're still growing and so um, for a single bearing ewe we need to maintain that 2.8 condition score um, as a minimum and and for the uh, multiple bearing ewes we like them at a three or you know between a three and a three and a half is, is um, ideal and so the other thing at lambing um, to consider also is lamb birth weight is the single most important predictor of lamb survival and the first 48 hours are critical 70% of lamb mortality happens in this period and so ewe nutrition and lamb survival is very strongly related and using good condition at lambing have higher heavier lambs 
and a lower mortality rate. So it really is um, key to to watch these young ewe lambs throughout the pregnancy and make sure that we maintain those condition scores because that's what's going to contribute to um, birth weight and therefore lamb survival. And um, the next thing with our lambing is the mob size and just something that maybe I can touch on there is is that it's good to have these ewes um, segregated up into their their lambing mobs and moved into their appropriate paddocks um, prior to lambing and particularly these ewe lambs because um, the last thing we want to be doing and we all probably know how hard it is to to move ewes and lambs and to do anything with them and and uh, but these these young ewes are certainly going to be more prone to to walking away and with their lack of experience and being their first lamb they're more, more likely to, to walk away from these lambs if we try and disturb them and and uh, move them in that that early um, part of the lambing and so it's good to have them in their paddocks and settled um, ready to go and so mob sizes um, the ideal mob size that's suggested for a single bearing use is is less than 300 uh, and multiple births no more than 250 uh, that's just a ballpark figure and something that we can work with there's certainly been a lot of work done in recent times to suggest that mob size for our multiples down to 60 or 70 can really make a difference to our lambing percentages so um, that probably requires more paddocks and sometimes is, is uh, not not always easy for us in in larger areas to to um, achieve that those mob sizes but um, it's certainly something to consider if we do have that opportunity to to divide our our ewes up into those smaller mobs there's definitely uh, some benefits in doing that as far as um, our lambing percentages at the end of it all and so it's important too to familiarize ourselves with our paddocks and the size of the nursery in particular paddocks that we are lambing down multiples and can't put enough emphasis on this um, it really can be a key um, to our success um, is, is understanding our, our paddocks and more so the nursery or the or the private area within each paddock and an example of this is we may have an appropriate size paddock for say 200 multiples and only have uh, like a small clump of trees or a small gully or something that within the paddock that these ewes might congregate to when they're ready to lamb um, and that might be the only area within that paddock that they can use for a nursery or they're, they're happy to to use as a private area and if we end up with 20 or 30 ewes lambing down in that, a that area in one day it could be potentially disastrous because of due to uh, mismothering and the likes and so we really need to be aware of the size of the nursery in each paddock and it's good practice um, to document paddocks that we have um, the most successful outcomes for further reference and so really understand um, and document um, our paddock, the, the percentage, lambing percentages that we get out of each paddock and document the best ones so that in future years we can use those paddocks for our multiples and therefore be uh, more successful and so um, and that's something that I'd just like to put out there and, and make people aware that um, if if people wanted help with any of this in in assessing paddocks and just some advice or um, around the amount of ewes that we put in each paddock um, just a self-assessment individual farms or or um, best paddocks for for lambing down and and looking at the size of the nursery and all the rest of it that Kate and I are, are more than happy and very much available to to come out or to talk to people about this or to come and have a look and and just walk you through it and what might um, give you the best outcomes and so just before I go on any further we've just had a, a question come in um, on the best time to, to condition score and I've mentioned condition scoring 
twice already, um, pre-joining and, and, and pre-lambing. And I think um, pre-joining, like we need to be condition scoring, we need to prep, prep these ewes really um, six to eight weeks at least out from when we would join because if we're not where we need to be, we've got to give ourselves time to, to lift these these ewes up. And as I said, a condition score, um, rule of thumb, it can take about four weeks or a month to lift a single condition score. So we do really need to be condition scoring these, um, these ewes um, probably six to eight weeks out from from joining and and really from then on I think we really at any opportunity we get we really need to be condition scoring these ewes and because we there's going to come a point where um, we're not going to feel good about getting these ewes in and condition scoring them so it comes back to early on if we've we've got these ewes in for whatever reason any opportunity we get we need to condition score um, and just to monitor these ewes and make sure they they are where they should be and um, so I hope that helps and put some clarity on that as far as condition scoring so then um, we talk about weaning and really there's not not a whole lot of difference, I don't think, with the weaning process to our, our adult ewes. We've, um, weaning pro pretty much gets us to the, to the point of uh, the job, job almost completed. Um, and um, so it's, I think it's just as with adult ewes, um, the lambs can be weaned from 12 to 14 weeks after the start of lambing and and really it, it, it really comes down to um, individual farms and how we're set up and the feed quality we could certainly uh, wean these lambs earlier than that but that's just to <coughs> give people a bit of an idea and really um, the earlier we can wean these lambs off these young users is probably what we're aiming for because it just allows the young ewes to regain condition lost during lactation to be ready for joining next year. So that, that's the key really once we get to this point is to um, try and get these, ewes, these lambs off these ewes as early as we can because often we're joining these, <coughs> these ewe lambs later than our adult ewes and if we want to bring them around again to join the same time as our adult ewes in the next year um, we really need to get these lambs off as quick as we can so that we give them time um, to put condition back on and be ready to join uh, the following year. So that's probably the key there as far as weaning is concerned. Um, now financial <coughs> benefits, I haven't actually, this is my first year myself as a, as a producer in, in joining uh, my ewe lambs so I, I can't really put much clarity that around that myself, but I, I did see some research published recently, recently by the, the MLA um, which suggests that joining your lambs um, rather than waiting till they're 15 to 18 month old ewes is estimated to result um, in a slight increase in returns based on a conservative lambing percentage of 60% lambs weaned to ewes joined, and which I believe is, is quite achievable. Um, with good management and if we tick all these boxes I, I think that is is really very achievable and I think this comes through um, the extra lamb that we get um, in the life of these these ewe lambs over the course of the time of we might uh, normally keep our adult ewes, ewes for five years and join them at 15 to 18 months but by joining these ewe lambs we get that extra lamb and and uh, if it's done right, we, c we can get that extra lamb without any, any consequences to um, the further, further um, development and growth of these ewes. And so um, I guess the key considerations here in, in, in joining these, these um, young ewes is, is um, 
target body weight and nutrition. They're, they're the things that um, get us off to a, a really good start and then we get the keep the nutrition up to these young ewes right throughout the pregnancy and throughout lactation. Um, we can really have a successful successful outcome and so it is um, there there for me I think really the the two two main main things that we need to to consider and I've just um, had another question come in there from Kirk Bradshaw and it's a good question Kirk thank you very much for that and he's just asked when are the best joining times and what are your thoughts on joining twice yearly and um, the best times um, I think uh, I'll just get my head around that one a bit um, um, I would I would like to join before the end of June um, the adult use I try and aim for for um, for March and um, that that is when the cooler we, we start to move into that cooler period that's when those ewes start to cycle better um, so that's something to consider um, some people use the moon the cycle of the moon the new moon they, they join around that new moon um, but obviously March is probably a bit early for us particularly in the merino game for these ewe lambs because we haven't reached those growth rate targets yet by all means, if you do reach those growth um, body targets by that time, then yeah, it, it, it'd be more than achievable to, to join those young ewes March, April. Um, but I guess um, for those of us that can't, we're going to be looking more at May, June. And I think that's probably not a bad time because we're going to be lambing down, um, say, October and then. Um, for, for a lot of us, we'll have oats um, through the through the winter period to to feed these um, young ewes on and and to keep keep the nutritional uh, requirements up to them. And also, um, lambing down in October before it just gets really too hot. And then um, we'll have, you know, f for those of us that have a bit of farming in our in our enterprise, we can have. Um, summer crop coming on for those lambs so um, I hope that that um, answers your question there Kirk I just I'm not really sure about the joining twice yearly I know there is being some work done um, and I did listen to a a webinar with Jason Tromp and maybe some of you are familiar with with Jason Jason Tromp the sheep consultant from Victoria he was talking about just recently about um, three lambings in two years and uh, that's something that um, there's probably not a lot of research being done on and but they're certainly working on on doing a bit more of that at the moment it, um, there's probably more work work being done in the south because um, I think they have probably often a better feed quality all year round than maybe we do and is maybe more achievable for them but there it comes back to really your enterprise and and what you have available in your feed base um, as to whether you can continually reach those target uh, body weight targets and and really keep that that nutritional value up to and I think that really is is the key there and as to whether or not we can be successful in that um, joining you know, getting three lambings in two years. So. I hope that helps, Kirk. And Kirk, and thank you very much for the for the question. So, so that's about it for today. Um, and I hope that puts a bit of clarity around um, joining these these ewe lambs and and their uh, what we need to achieve to to be successful and and what we need to do to keep the nutrition up to these young ewes. So, so thank you very much and. Uh, if anybody needs any further help um, with any of this, we, we're, we're on the phone. We're more than happy to come out and help. And, and just make mention too that this um, 
Q&A this morning has been recorded, so if anybody has not been able to, to watch it or they want to come back and, and go over again what's been talked about, then there will be a recording uh, put up on our Facebook page on the local land services Facebook page for, for further reference. So thank you very much.